Okay, so welcome back. This is video number five, and we're going to talk about the buyer that fits these concerns and these pain points. So based on the prior video, we should have an idea about the pain points and the loss of time. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out what do they look like? What age are they? And what demographics are they? Now with a security product, you could be all over the place, but what you're not trying to do is figure out what your buyer is, but who is your hungriest buyer? So when you really think about who is losing the most sleep at night, that is most likely your hungriest buyer. If you've got somebody who's like, yeah, I could use a security product, that would be something good, but they're not necessarily losing sleep, that might not be the buyer that you want to target. Because remember, you can't target everyone. You can have you could have 10 different funnels going to different email autoresponder series and different video sales letters, but that's not your goal. You're trying to find the hungriest buyer, essentially. So we're going to do a few things that will help us figure that out. So let's take a look at what we wrote earlier. So now what I want you to do is ask yourself, what do these buyers look like? We're going to dig deeper into this and you're going to see like the next video after that, we're going to try to figure out what the typical day looks like. So we're going to dig that deep. And the reason why is because that's going to help you convert more sales when you can relate to somebody and they feel like they're reading your sales letter or listening to your sales video. And they feel like, wow, this person really understands me. They understand my needs. They understand why I'm up at night. Oh, I trust this person. I'm going to buy from them versus they go to somebody else who's just trying to sell them and they don't really understand them. It's kind of like you walk into a, a store and somebody asks, Hey, like, what do you need this for? Or let me give you a better example, a car dealership. Most people are very fearful about going to car dealerships, but when they get there and the car dealership does not act like the typical car dealership and they're like, Hey, what are you looking for? Okay. All right. And they leave you alone but they're genuinely interested because they want you to find the right car versus the other person's like, Hey, I think this is great for you. You look kind of like the, the guy who wants the Ferrari or whatever. And you might not be the guy who wants the Ferrari or the lady who wants something else. So that's why we were thinking, listen versus speak. So most of the car dealerships that are assuming they are seen as speaking before listening. But a lot of car dealerships are actually trying to change into listening first before speaking. So what I want you to try to write out is the detail of how you envision them in your mind. If you're a visual person, you can even draw them if you would like. So that will help you figure out who they look like. Now, of course, you may not know exactly how they look like, but this exercise is to merely help you better process what your potential buyer looks like. So you may not know exactly what race they are or what sex they are, if they're male or female or whatever, but kind of get an idea of their needs essentially. So it's much better if you can even find somebody, you know, in your real life, because that will help paint a better picture. If you can do that, that will help you stick in your minds like, oh, okay, I need to reach, talk to this person because they're interested in this product and service and they have specific needs. And that's why if you can do that, great. If you can't, then what you want to do is you want to try to find somebody who fits that and try to get on the phone with them and just talk with them. And you don't even have to speak. You just let them talk. So it's a counseling session. You, you have the right questions to ask them. All you have to do is talk to them. And most likely if somebody is very passionate about a specific subject matter, they're going to talk and talk and talk for literally several hours. And guess what? They're going to walk away and they're going to feel like, wow, I, I was able to process through what is in my mind, but not only that I'm getting paid for it. So if you sit down with somebody and you pay them whatever amount of money that you think is valuable, $10, $20, $30, 50 or 100, whatever you think is valuable for them, and get a genuine response from them, then that's going to help you down the road. Now let's do a further analysis by doing some basic demographic research with a free 
Facebook ad tool. So obviously in order to use this tool, you will need to have a Facebook account. But this is an amazing tool that will reveal some information that is the data that you need in the marketplace, such as who they are, what sex they are, where they're located, what they're earning, and all of that. Okay, so we're gonna be using a tool called Facebook Audience Insights. Now, the URL I've noticed is a little different. Sometimes it's business.facebook.com and then sometimes it's facebook.com. So I can say the best way to get there is simply by logging into your Facebook account, looking for the Facebook Ads Manager, go there and up at the top, if you click that button that says Ads Manager, you're gonna see an option that says Business Settings, Ads Manager, Audience Insights, and audiences. Now, if you're still not able to get there, you can also go to google.com and type in Facebook audience insights. And it really depends on where you're located that URL can change. So you wanna to go to audience insights. This is basically a tool that Facebook gives you for free that you can use. And it allows you to see a micro data of people who are highly interested in specific topics, people who are highly interested in pages that you might be connected to and all that. So the easiest way to use this tool is not using any of these first, but by entering the interest. So let's switch to something else because I did a search early on home security and I wasn't getting a lot of traction. So let's do a search on home automation and see what we get. Now, what's interesting about this was I assumed that the people that would be interested in home automation would primarily be men. And while it's about close to 50-50, you can see that 56% of women are interested in home automation. Now, we don't know. We Hypothetically, that could be because they're using their husband's accounts. We don't know. But this is enough data to tell us that there is a majority of women. So 56% women, 44% men. Now, the nice thing about this tool is it allows you to paint the picture in a better light. So let's say, for example, that we want to figure out, are these women single or are they mainly married? So you can see 21% is the highest here. We've got 25% for men for ages 25 to 34. So this age bracket here somehow seems to be more interested in home automation. Now, 35 to 44, for men, it's about the same. For women, it's about very similar, but it's 21%, 90%. But this bracket here, age 25 all the way to 54, they seem to be highly interested in home automation. Now, we can see that the older it gets, 55 to about 65, they're not as interested. In 18 to 24, they're not as interested. So that gives us an idea of who we can target, but... We want to get an idea of what their likes are, what their dislikes are, what their lifestyle is, and begin to kind of paint a picture of who they look like. And that's why in a minute, as you can see here, my assumption that it, it was a men, but it was reality, it was mainly women. And that's interesting because that shows you that my assumption was incorrect. That's why assumptions are so dangerous because imagine if you were built to build a whole sales funnel based on your assumptions and what you saw because you're thinking, okay, I own this product and service, so I must know the demographics, but in reality, it's the opposite. So what's nice about Facebook Audience Insights is if you click on one of these, so we'll click on 25 to 34, and this is merely focusing on the women. So 500 to 600,000 monthly active people. We can scroll down and we can see that most of them are married. A lot of them are single, but most of them are married. A lot of them have college degrees. A lot of them are into healthcare and medical services, personal care and home services, education and libraries, legal services. So not necessarily technical, but they are very highly into healthcare. So we don't know exactly why until we actually go to the pages that they like and look at that. So we can see business and finance, that's sort of techy. But let's scroll back up and look at the page likes. These right here are the top categories that they are interested in for this age range of 25 to 34. So we can see exactly what they're interested in, clothing stores, jewelry, cosmetics, 
baby goods, Ikea. So it looks like they're interested in a lot of baby goods. So what we saw earlier was that a lot of them were married at this age or maybe beginning their life of being married and having a family. So we can see the page likes. You can even go to these pages and see how they interact with each other. We can go to location to get an idea of where they're located. So we can see North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas. So a lot of these are actually the Southeast, which is interesting. I don't know why they're interested in home automation, but they are. So that gives us an idea of geographically, maybe we can dig further, look into cultures. They look like Southern, so we don't really know why they're interested in home automation, but they are. If we click on activity, we can see how engaging they are. A lot of them comment, a lot of them likes, they don't do a lot of sharing, but they do click ads. They are, a lot of them are using desktops or iPhones or Android. So they're using a lot of smartphones and they're using desktop computers. So that gives us an idea of who we're dealing with. If we go back to demographics, the nice thing about this is you can paint a picture for this particular demographic, but if you wanted to move on to, let's say men, ages 35 to 44, we click that with our mouse and Facebook is gonna give the data for that particular segment. So if you scroll down, we can see a lot of them are married. A lot of them have college degrees. There's IT, technical services, mathematics, engineering, veterans. So that's interesting because a lot of these men are having jobs that are highly technical. And that makes sense. They are into home automation because they're highly technical. So looking at the women, however, on the other hand, a lot of them are healthcare. So digging further into that and trying to figure that out would be beneficial to you. So maybe even finding somebody who's that age, who's into healthcare, maybe a nurse or something like that, and sit down and talk with them and they're interested in home automation, that will give you a better idea of who you're dealing with. So like I said earlier, you're not trying to target everybody and all the buyers out there. You're trying to target a specific segment of people who are very, very interested and highly hungry in terms of a buyer. So that's how to use Facebook audience insights to gather even more data and more information about your buyer. What I want to do now is dig further and deeper into their typical day.